telling you, no grave can hold him. No matter what the world get, says, I want you to know he's alive this morning. Yes. No matter what the skeptic may say, the atheist may say, he's alive this morning. Amen? Amen. No matter what people believe, he's still alive this morning. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles this Sunday morning, turn with me to the book of Psalm 17, beginning in verse 8. Psalm 17, beginning in verse 8, right here. No better place on this earth to be than in the house of God this morning. I don't know about you. How many look forward to coming to the house of God? How many look forward to what God's going to do? Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, uh, uh, Brother Ralph Parker, give a testimony. And I'm telling you, God, a man, talked about a man, he, a couple of testimonies happened in Virginia. What God done, a man was needing a great financial miracle. God put $12,000 in this man's hand just like that. Praise the Lord. And he said there was another little girl that revived that revival of red wine. That she had the spirit of cutting herself. But God delivered her. Yes. That's the power of God this yes. morning. Amen. Yes. That's the power that she yes. needed in this society right now. The devil's having a heyday. The devil's trick-or-treating. That's what I'm going to speak on this morning the devil's trick or treat. Psalm 17, beginning in verse 8. The word of God says, Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me from the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me. From my deadly enemies who compass, compass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth. They speak proudly. They have now passed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth like as a lion that is greedy of his prey as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. This morning I want to speak to you on the devil's trick or treat and I'm not going to allow the devil to trick or treat at my house this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father we come before you this morning Lord and we lift you up. Lord, and we exalt you, dear God, today, Lord, and we honor you, dear God, today, Lord. We give you glory, God, and we give you praise today, Lord, and we ask for your anointing, O oh God. We ask for your blessings, O oh God. Lord, let your word flow through me, dear God, today, Lord, and let your spirit, dear God, be upon me as I bring forth thy word, O oh God. Lord, move in our midst, O oh God, this morning, Lord, and let the word take forth, God. Touch those that need to be touched, dear God. Heal bodies, Lord. Move, Lord, upon individuals, dear God, today, Lord. And, oh, God, today we give you glory, God. We give you praise and we give you honor. This morning in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. As I told you in the beginning this morning, I, today, this is the day that the Lord had made. I, I'm not, I do not celebrate Halloween this morning. I don't believe that Christians ought to dress up as witches, ghosts, and goblins, and demons, the things the Bible does condemn, by the way. And I don't, I don't believe that we celebrate darkness this morning. And, and because why? Because the Bible tells us that we are the children of light. And that as the children of light, we ought to walk in the light and not in darkness this morning. But I can tell you one thing I do know that happens on Halloween is that many kids will dress up and go trick-or-treating in search of getting candy from different houses they may visit. But I want you to know this morning, there's another trick-or-treat. I'm not dealing with the day so much, but I'm going to tell you there's another trick-or-treat that is taking place right now. And that is the devil. He is going to trick you. He wants to trick you and you be his treat this morning. You see, listen today. We need to understand that he's out a trick-or-treating. We need to understand he's out seeking whom he may grab a hold of. He's lurking, if you will. We can see in the book of Job what the enemy is doing right here in Job chapter 1, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro 
in the earth and from walking up and down in it. So walk in, in Job 2 and 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. What do you think he was doing? He was looking for someone that he could make his prey. After all, we are told in the New Testament by Peter that the enemy is out see, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. In other words, he's looking for a treat this morning. In other words, he's looking for someone that he can eat up. Someone that, that he can put on his dinner table, if you will, today. You see, when we begin to think about this enemy, we need to understand that Jesus told us a lot about the devil. We need to understand that Jesus warned us about him. After all, Jesus said in John 8 and 44, he said that the devil was a liar and he is the father of lies this day. Then in John chapter 10, verse 10, we see Jesus say that Satan was a thief and he had a purpose. He had come to steal, to kill, and to destroy this morning. In other words, you could say that the enemy is out looking to try to bring destruction upon your life. You can see the effects of what the enemy is doing. You can see the effects of how Satan is out roaring and how he's out, he's doing his job and how many people are, are falling prey to the enemy this morning. How many are becoming his trick or treat if you will. But I want you to know this morning child of God. I want you to know the devil ain't got no place in your life this morning. Somebody needs to say I ain't, the devil has no place in my life this morning. I said the devil has no place in my life this morning. I can't help when he comes walking around and he comes knocking on the door but I sure don't have to allow him to come in. Did you hear me? I sure don't have to allow him give him anything to work with. I, I sure don't have to fall for his tricks where I could be, be his treat this morning. I, my Lord today, I, that devil is hell bent on destroying people. I, that devil is hell bent on destroying families. I, that devil is hell bent on destroying lives this morning. I, if my friend today, I, if there's an old saying that if you give him an inch, I, he will take a mile. Oh, but I want to tell you I disagree with that statement. I, I believe that if you give him an inch, I, can I tell you this morning I, that he will take a soul, if you will. I, he just won't take a little bit. I, he'll take a soul today. I, my Lord, you can see how, how many are falling prey to the devil. You can see how many are becoming his treat. And he is devouring them this morning. You say, how does the devil do this? Men that became the greatest takeaway. The devil works. He works through deception. He works through trickery. He works through wiles. And change, if you will. But I'm going to tell you that devil this morning is very deceptive. I want you to know that when he comes, he ain't going to come with a red suit on. I want you to know he ain't going to have cords. And I want you to know he ain't going to have a pitchfork. That is a Hollywood view of the devil. That's not a biblical view of the devil. That is a Hollywood view of the devil. Because if he comes to you with a red suit on, with a tail and a horns and a pitchfork, guess what? You're going to recognize him as who he is. You're going to see right through him. You're going to know it. You see, the, the Bible describes us how he does come. The Bible tells us the imagery that he does use, if you will. To the skies that he puts on. In 2 Corinthians 11 and 14, the 
Word of God says, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Didn't say he was an angel of light. Said he's transformed into it. In other words, he disguises himself as something that he ain't. See, that disguise, what's the purpose of disguise? It is the trick. It's where the trick or treat and this dressing up comes from. We can see it. I ain't got time to go into the culture, how it all came to be, but you research it and look how it came into be. But the point of dressing up, putting on these outfits that many will do tonight is to do a trick in order to get a treat. But you see, the devil has got an outfit mm -hmm. to trick you. See, what is trickery? To appear as something in that he is not. He disguises himself as an angel of life. Why? To fool one. Not to reveal who he really is, but to appear as something that he is not. For example, how many know that Jesus told us to be aware of wolves in sheep's clothing? How many know that wolf has a sheep's clothing on it? But because just because it's got the clothing on it does not change the fact that it's still a wolf on the inside. Hello, just because it's got the clothes on it don't change the fact that it's still a wolf. But the purpose of putting that sheep's clothing up is to Disguise the sin for the other sheep won't recognize that they're a wolf. You see, that's what the devil does. He may appear as an angel of light, but yet he's still a devil. Just because he appears to be good, don't mean he's good. Hello? Just because he appears to be something that he isn't don't mean he is. Because that's a disguise to fool you, to trick you, if you will. See, deception is his game. Satan's greatest game is deception. That's what trickery is, deception. Coming as an angel of light, you wouldn't... He'll think most people would suspect for the big devil. Because, after all, he's appearing as an angel of light. Appearing as something that he's really not. In other words, I believe he had given you one side of what he is. But he's going to show you the other side of it, of the picture. Think about these commercials that paint. Let's talk about Budweiser, the alcohol commercial. How many know they paint the picture of a good time? Yeah, they do. And never show you the side effect of the result of drunk driving. Right. Hello? And don't show you the lies that's been drawn. Right. And don't show you the ones that's got grabbed into bondage and, the, and drinks cups. I mean, man, I know people, know stories of people who were so addicted to alcohol that they would literally drink mouthwash to get high off of it. That's addiction. Yeah. But how did it start? It didn't start, it started with one drink. Yeah. Started with just a little bit. Painted the picture that everybody else was having a good time, sitting around a campfire. Seemed like everybody was going, but little did they know. What would take place? Little did they know what would happen, if you will. Think about this morning. Think about the word, how abortion is propagated, but yet they don't tell the results of a woman in her mental anguish after having that abortion, if you will. See, Satan works with deception. 
to make it appear as something that is not. For example, we see Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God had said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them were both open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed big leaves together and made themselves aprons. So what do we see? Satan appealing to them. We see deception. He said, your eyes will be open. You know, they knew the good part. The only thing that they were going to realize when they talked them was the bad. They knew the good things. The only thing left to gain was the bad. But here we know that I believe what 1 John 2 and 16 says is what he appealed to them with. He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. See right here, he, the devil went a trick or treat. In the garden of Eden, he went a trick or treat. And Adam and Eve, he went to Eve. When she was the one that was deceived. Adam was the one who rebelled. But let me tell you, he went a trick or treat and promising them a treat. But he was tricking them and the only one that would be treated was him. See, this is the way the enemy works. The laugh would be upon Adam and Eve and mankind. And they wouldn't gain nothing from it. They would find themselves and fall and pray to the enemy, if you will. Think about this morning. The number of people the devil is promising a treat to this morning. I want you to know it's nothing more than flat out trickery. I want you to know it's nothing more than deception that he is using. My Lord, how many have died and went to hell because of being deceived by the enemy? How many are on their way to hell this morning because they've been deceived by the enemy that are being deceived by the enemy this morning? My Lord, look at our world today. They call evil good and good evil. They put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Oh, my Lord, what's happening? I'll tell you what's happening. The devil will trick or treat this morning. And people are falling for his tricks. And we want to know why our nation is going to hell in a handbasket. Right. Look at our kids. Has to talk about that school, these satanic cults. These schools doing drag kids dressing up in drag queen and doing pains perverse to the principles. These at schools taking these kids to gay bars on a trip. My Lord, did you didn't think all of this is tolerance? No, all they're being tricked. All of this is leading down the path of destruction this morning. Yeah. My Lord, we better wake up. Yes, we do. If there's a time we better get serious with God, we better get serious with God right now. We tell me to something. Facebook. They got an idea they want to make you be on the hologram somewhere. I wouldn't mind being able to be in 10 places at one time. But I'm telling you, I'm very concerned with what they're trying to do. Yeah. They're trying to play God. Yeah. Telling you, there's more to this than meets the eye. We're being deceived. People being tricked. Yeah. 
to believe something that ain't right. See, they tell you what you want to hear to get, they, to get you where they want you to go. How many know a lot of politicians will tell you what you want to hear till they get in office? Yeah, that's true. Hello? That's true. Hello? They'll tell you what you want to hear to tickle your ear when they get in office? Let me tell you the exact opposite. Let me tell you, we better wake up. We better wake up. We better wake up. People are being deceived by the hands of the enemy. We got indoctrination going on in our schools. Oh Lord, my little girl told me we had to have a conversation with her. She said she had a look about bisexuality. Seven years old because a little girl in her class said she was bisexual. Didn't know what it was. I said, well, wait just a minute. You tell them this. I said, you tell that little girl and you can, she can tell her parents. And if she starts talking that stuff to her, that your daddy would don't have a problem coming down there and praying the devil out of all of them. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you a seven-year-old that kids don't need to be involved, need to be thinking about nothing like that. True. They need to be thinking about playing G.I. Jones and Barbie dolls and things like that. Right. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you, it shows you the level of where we are. It shows you how deceived, how deceived many people are in our adults and in our kids as well as taking place. And I blame a lot of deceitment on our kids is by the adults indoctrinating them. The parents doing it, promoting it. Wake up! Let me tell you, They'll be who they want to be. Yeah, so you want a little bit walk down the road, boys walk down the road with dresses on their way to hell? Want them to walk down the road? Two girls getting married, two men getting married while they're on their way to hell, wake up. Want them to go ahead and kill their child in the womb? Have blood on their hands, wake up. What's next? Don't ask me if they... Don't say well, how much dumber can they get because I promise you they can get much dumber. <laughs> it seems like every time you see you ask that question, how much dumber can people get? In a lot of cases, they prove to you they can. Why? It's all deception. All in the name of freedom. All in the name of freedom. All in the name of tolerance. Let me tell you. Now what has happened? Deceivement. Trick or treating. The devil a trick or treat. Yeah. That's true. And people were perishing. Yeah. I've had a philosophy through all this COVID. My heart goes out to anybody that's lost anybody from this virus. But I'm going to tell you people are fearing the wrong thing. Right. They're fearing death. That ain't what they need to fear. They need to worry about where they're going to spend eternity at. Amen. Because you're not going to escape that Amen. if the Lord tarries. You're not going to escape death if the Lord tarries. Everybody, you better be worried about where you're going to spend it at. That's what the people need to be fearing about. If people feared hell as much as they did heaven, as they did this virus, let me tell you, this parking lot would be full this morning. Amen. It'd be inside and outside. Amen. Hello. Amen. Hello. Let me tell you a crime shame. I, I seen it on Facebook last night. How churches were that were doing these trunk or treating things don't even get me started there, but I'm just gonna say it like this. There were more people lined up for that than they are this morning in the houses of God. God help us. God help us. God help us. We need an awakening. I'm telling you, people are falling trickery to the devil. They don't realize what's important anymore. They don't realize the value of a soul anymore. They don't realize how precious their soul is. You can gain the world, but if you lose your soul, what good is it? Gain everything in this world, but you lose out with God. You miss heaven, what good is it going to be? How many know Jesus told the rich he told the man that built, called the man that built many barns, 
He said, eat, drink, and be merry. And he said, we'll do my soul for years. Jesus said, God said, God said that night, he called him a fool and said, that night thy soul shall be required of thee. God help us. Wake up. Deception. Deception. And I'm not, and I don't, I don't believe people ought to, but, you know, I'm not against people prospering. I'm not against people having great things, but I'm telling you, I am against people when the possessions possess the person. Right. Yeah. When it becomes your God. Mm-hmm. People are falling trickery today. That devil's a trick or treat. He's tricking you and getting some a treat that he's feasting on. Why is he feasting on people? Because they're listening to the trickery. Even some Christians find themselves under his trickery. Do you know there's a lot that find themselves afraid, oppressed? Why are they oppressed? Why are they brought down? Because they listen to the lies of the devil this morning. Mind games. How many know where the devil's playground is? It's in your mind. You're here tonight. I'm going to preach a message about what we're giving heed to, what we're listening to. Let me tell you where that devil operates. He operates right there. This is where his trickery begins. And let me tell you, some people, let me tell you, sometimes the issues of the mind is more worse than the issues of the physical. True. Anybody realize that this morning? Sometimes the mind can be a whole I'd rather have something physically wrong with me than have something in my mindset. This is where he plays it. This is where he propagates it. This is where he works at in the mindset of somebody. Playing in the mind, bringing them oppressed. He got fear of Paul. I'm talking about a spirit of fear. I'm not talking about a reverent fear at this point. I'm talking about a spirit of fear where some people are scared of their own shadow. People are living down by fear because they've been deceived by sin. He'll make things bigger than they really are. He'll make something look more terrible than it really is. Anybody ever worried about something? Now in your mind, it began to blow up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody else? I'm one of them. I know there's a couple in here. You've had something go on in your life, and all of a sudden you begin to think about it, and it got blown up compared to what it really was. Man, you thought the worst. True. How many know when you got there and you found out it wasn't that bad? It was just a spring breeze. Nothing really took place out of it. But yeah, you want me to tell you what was worse than the actual event? The thinking about it. The picture you got in your mind. How bad it's going to be. That's the devil trick. And people are falling for it today. Listen, that devil's a trick or treat. And the result is people are being eaten alive by the old devil. They're being devoured this morning. Why? Because I'm convinced that many Christians, or I'm saying Christians right here, many Christians open the door for him to work. Listen, here's how it goes. I, I can't help when he comes knocking around. He may come knocking. You know what some do? They open the door. And they say, Come on in. Or we open a window. Here's a good way to get some air. They open a window and give him a space. To operate in. You know what? I can't stop him from knocking. But I sure don't have to open him a place. Give him a place to operate in my life.
It's exactly what many people are doing. Right. There are certain channels I'm not, there are certain news I'm not going to listen to. There are certain ones that come on TV I'm not going to pay a bit of attention to. I'll just tell you right now. If I see Fauci come on TV, I'm turning the channel. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Man, it was cruel in them little puppies and killed all these people. Yeah. I ain't paying that man a bit of attention. Amen. If Pinocchio were real today, that man's nose would be all the way around the world. Yeah. But people listen to that stuff. Sure. You can go on social media and see how people are listening to it. People get scared somebody don't have a mask on. Listen, I don't care if you wear a mask or not. If you want to do it, you go ahead and do it. If you don't, you don't have to. Amen. Right. Amen. I, I'm not scared. True. I, you know, I'll tell people, do what you want to do. But don't force your opinion on me, and I'm not going to force mine on you. Right. Amen. I'm not going to go around spreading. <laughs> Lies all everywhere I go. That's right. But I wish I had some lice all here. I would use bomber right here for the town. <laughs> I'd spray. <laughs> no, I'm just coming. No, I didn't. You want to do it, do it. But I refuse to let Fauci bring fear upon me. Right. Amen. They said, we don't know if you can celebrate Christmas this year or not. I said, I'll celebrate Christmas anyway. Don't care what you Amen. I'm going to celebrate Jesus. Amen. 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 I find it interesting. Let me just say this and I'll get off this kick. I find it interesting. Anybody paying attention to the World Series? There ain't nobody in there. Or college football. Nobody in there got none of that on. Notice that. Very few, any, most people, no more routine. They want to try to make it other places. I'm just going to say that. Just take it as a grain of salt. They, they say do what we tell you to do, not as we do, in other words. But what I'm telling you is, if I'm going to, if I'm, I'm not, there's certain things I'm not going to listen to. Sure. Not because I'm denying that they're not a real virus. I'm, I'm never, I'll never deny that. I know it's real. I know for a fact it's real. But I also know the flu is real. Sure. I also know cancer is real. Right. I also know sugar diabetes is real. Right. Sure. And I, I'll drink me a Mountain Dew today. <laughs> Oh, we me some candy today. Pray over it. I'll go on. But listen, I'm not going to open a door. I'm not going to let somebody push fear inside of me. I don't want to lock myself in my house and not come out. I don't want to let myself at my house and, and every time I hear something <laughs> my Bible says oh, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death he's with me hello hello I don't have to fear but we get open the door many times and we fall prey to what the enemy is wanting to do he tricks us I guarantee you I about guarantee you everything that you're being told on TV is not true. true. Right. Everything that is coming from our government is not true. Right. Amen. Right. Let me tell you about this current government. Don't take, take everything they say with a grain of salt. Right. Because I promise you everything they're telling you is not right. right. It'll come out later on. Oh yeah. But I'm not, I don't listen to certain news organizations because it's fear this, fear that, fear this, fear this, fear this. You better be scared. You better be scared. No, I don't. It's, it's the devil's mind games. Right. See, fear will, fear will paralyze somebody. Right. Fear 
will kill somebody. I mean, no, fear will kill more people. Yes, true. Don't let that to you. Walk by faith. See, the Bible tells us today we don't open the door for fear to come in. James 4 and 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from me. What does that word resist mean? Stand against, oppose, act in opposition. In other words, stand against his wiles, his schemes. And I'll tell you, the church needs to stand up in these last days. Amen. Don't allow the devil to come in. First of all, James says, submit yourself to God. tricks. Because if you do, you're just going to be the truth this morning. You say, preacher, how can I stop the devil from trick-or-treating in my house? At my house. First of all, let me tell you. Again, you can't help him knocking on the door. But if he's coming back, let me tell you something. I believe the word of God tells us where we need to go. We've got to renew our minds. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now verse Romans 12, verse 2. Then be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. The mind is what the Holy Spirit tells us to have renewed. How do we stop the devil? How do we stop from falling from his tricks, if you will? Well, I believe the first thing you need to do is you need to fill your mind with the Word of God. Hello? You need to get God's Word. You need to have a steady diet of God's Word. You don't need just a Sunday morning or a Sunday night or a Wednesday night. You need it during the week. You need to fill your mind with the Word of God. Amen. That's the reason it's so important to be in this Word. Amen. So important to study the Word at home. It's important to be in the house of God, to hear the Word of God preached. Amen. But it's also important because to have it at home because you'll get it at home more than you'll be in church. Fill ourselves with the Word. People say, I don't have time to get in the Word. If you've got time to get on Facebook, you've got time to get in the Word. Right. Hello. We need to be a Facebook church. Hear what I'm telling you. We need to have our face in His book. Amen. That's the kind of Facebook church, church I'm talking about. Our face in His book. Because that Word's a sword in it. Right. That Word fights those thoughts in it. That word combats those things the devil tries to throw at us. How many know when Jesus was in the wilderness, the devil come after him, but what did Jesus do? He combated the devil with the word of God in right context. Right. Ain't that tell you what Jesus had to use the word? Don't it tell us we need the word? My Lord, let me tell you, if you neglect the word, let me tell you, you're going to find yourself, hit up, you're going to find yourself in a spider web of entanglement with messes. Heal your mind with the word of God. Let the word of God destroy those thoughts of the devil. Let the word of God combat those things, if you will. Put on that helmet of salvation as well. 
People don't study the Word. They neglect the Word. Ask yourself, how much time have I spent in the Word this week? How much time have I spent before God? Seeing what God had to say about a situation. What's God got to say about things going on? Listen here. Me tell you. Right here. It don't matter what man says. If God says differently. God be true. In every man alive this morning. And I'm telling you. God don't want you walking in fear. God don't want you being devoured by the enemy this morning. You hear me. You hear what I'm about to tell you. To, uh, let me tell you quickly. God don't want you. Don't want the devil trampling on you. Hello? Why? How do you say that, preacher? Because Jesus said, I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions. He said, and the power of the enemy by no means shall hurt you. I'm here this morning. <laughs> the devil could have killed me a long time ago. He could want it to, but he couldn't touch me. The enemy, he tried many times, but I'm still here. He's tried to bring discouragement many times, but I'm still here. Hello? He's tried to make depression come upon me, but I'm still here. Hello? Let me tell you right now, that devil, God never intended for the devil to trample on you. God intends for you to trample on the devil this morning. Somebody say, I'm tired of having trick-or-treaters in my house. I'm tired of having the devil trick-or-treat at my house. It's time for you to quit tricking me in, me, me, me in your treat. It's time for me to trample on you this morning. It's time for me to stop on you. It's time for me to be, walk all over you, run all over you. You. It's time for me to walk in victory this morning and not defeat this morning. You tell you some church. You tell any church out there. It's time for the church to start walking on serpents and scorpions. Right. We've let our society beat us down, intimidate us. Let me tell you that this world may look like a big giant compared to who we are, don't it? But I'll tell you, David was never intimidated by Goliath. Even though, David, even though Goliath put words out there and tried to intimidate him, mocked him, ridiculed him, said, I'll just feed you to the fowl of the air. David said, oh, no, David would not back down to the big uh, the words of Goliath. When he saw the signs of Goliath. But David knew the God that he served was bigger than the Goliath that was in front of him. David said, listen here, Goliath. God's going to give me your head today. <laughs> I want you to understand the size difference in the natural. But God said he would give him Goliath. How many know, church, we don't have to be scared. We can stand up and declare, thus said the Lord. Jump every pew in here this morning. I said, God is that we can trouble on him. Them serpents and scorpions. And this world may be a Goliath, but God said, I'll give you the head this morning. In other words, I'll give you victory this morning. Why should we fear? Why should we worry? Because the same God that was with David is the same God that is with us this morning. Why did Jesus give us the power of the Holy Ghost? Amen. To preach the gospel. Let right. me tell you, we got the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost this morning. Anybody else believe in the power of the Holy Ghost? Our oh, Lord, thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. I know this world's getting more rotten. It's getting more stinking by the day. But I also know where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds that much more. I know there's still a harvest out there. Amen. I know I still got, I can do the work of God this morning. 
Amen. Right. It was over. He had already took us out. But I'll tell you this morning, it ain't over yet. He means for us to keep battling. He means for us to keep marching. He means for us to keep storming the gates of hell this morning. He means for us to trample the enemies. He means for us to walk on them. He means for us to stomp on the enemy this morning. Not the other way. Too long we've allowed that we fell for the devil's trick-or-treats. It's time to shut the door on the devil and say, No more! I promise I ain't going to break it. He comes a knocking. Here's what we do. We tell him to get take a hike. Get lost, devil. You ain't coming to my house. Hello? I said, you ain't coming to my house. Somebody needs to tell the devil, you ain't coming to my house no more. If he's in your house, you need to kick the devil out at this morning. You need to say, no more. You ain't running rough shot over me no more. I'm not letting you trample on me no more. Because God told me that I got power over you this morning. God said, I give me, he's given me power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Not no more, devil. I said, not no more. You ain't welcome to my house. Let me tell you, the devil ain't welcome to my house. You need to say, the devil's not welcome in my house. The devil's not welcome in my life. He ain't got no place, child of God. You don't have to allow him to come in. You don't belong to him. The world's a different story, but when I got the blood... I don't belong to him. He don't have a right to come to, into my house. He comes in because I give him a place to come in. But we can also tell him to go. I'm going to stick. No matter what's going on, I'm still going to praise him. No matter what's still going on, I'm still marching on. Hello. Let me tell you, let me also... Not only do you need to fill your mind with the Word of God, you need to fill your mind with prayer and you need to worship. Right. You need to be praying and worshiping. Don't you be ignorant of the devil's devices. If you are ignorant, he will take advantage of you. Marcia, you can get ready to come. But you need to, some of you need to put aside and say, sorry, devil, this house is closed to your trick or treat. Sorry, devil. But I'm not going to open the door for you to come in, for you to trick me and make you me your treat. Because the only one getting the tricks on you, and, and you're the treat for him. And I'm not going to open the door. I'm not going to pawn for his tricks. I'm not going to give him a place to work in my life, if you will. You see, the devil's a trick or treat. And some are falling for his tricks because of his tricks. But in becoming his tricks this morning, don't you allow him to come. You need to lock the doors. You need to close the windows and say, Devil, I'm not going to allow you to come in my life. I'm not, not going to allow you to work in my life. I'm not going to give you place. You ain't got no right in my life. How many would say that this morning as you stand in here this morning? Let me tell you, the devil's a trick or treat this morning, but you don't have to allow him in. You don't have to be, you don't have to be his victim this morning. Did you hear me? I said, you don't have to be his victim this morning. Some of you this day need to close the door. Some of you need to say, I'm, I'm battling some things that I don't need to be battling. I need victory of it. I want you to know God to give you victory today. God said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. He said, I give you power. In other words, you got the authority, you got the power to God to tread on these things. You don't have to, but you can put, because Christ is in you, these things, these things are under your feet this morning. How many would say, preacher, here am I this morning? We'll see those online tonight. How many would say, preacher?